Good morning, good afternoon. Thank you for joining the third session of Sustainability Insight. Uh, firstly, I would like to introduce our organizing team from UNESCO Jakarta. My name is Sachi Suzuki, JFIT coordinator, and Kyle Haslam, MFIT coordinator. Felicia Angelina, Gani Mulia, and Chipta Yamatsanda from UNESCO Jakarta office. Today, we are going to focus on the capacity building challenges in small islands and the developing states. We proudly present Professor Shavas Khan, the director of UNESCO Regional Science Bureau for Asia and the Pacific as the moderator, and Ms. Salote Ligsolo Lukotogalev, coordinator of the Early Childhood Care and Education, University of South Pacific, Fiji, as our guest speaker. We are ready to take your questions through the Q&A box and the Facebook page. You are invited to fill the attendance list uh, form, which we will share during the webinar. This is uh, required, especially if you would like to receive the certificate. Okay, Professor Shabazz, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, dear Sachi and our team for organizing this wonderful uh, meeting. Today we take you to a very interesting part of the world, Fiji, which is a small island and developing state. It's about uh, uh, three and a half thousand kilometers to the east of Australia and about 2000 kilometers to the northeast of New Zealand. It takes a long time to reach there, but it's a very, very beautiful country with uh, more than 300 islands and more than 500 islets. But very importantly, it has many, many capable people who come from many parts of the world to make what Fiji is today. And very um, forthcoming with the right kind of education, the University of South Pacific. And we have with us today, Ms. Salote, who is uh, our friend who has been contributing to UNESCO programs. Since 2017, she has visited some of our meetings under Malaysia UNESCO cooperation program in Lankawi, and she has impressed her, us with um, her dedication, uh, with her insight uh, into many areas of education. Uh, University of South Pacific is contributing to 12 nations. We will hear more about that. But today we are going to talk about a very special topic of sustainability, which is about early child care and education. And Fiji is a special nation also because of so many interesting cultures. It has many languages as well. And uh, we need to teach uh, in the right way, in the right cultural context and making sure the whole nation continues to dwell further. Uh, as Ms. Salote tells me that it takes a village to raise a child. And that's what Nelson Mandela said. So maybe it takes a whole island to also, or a whole nation to raise a child. So dear Ms. Alote, tell us first of all about uh, the significance of early child uh, care and education, ECCE. What do we mean by this? Why it's so important and what is the context for Fiji before we learn how UNESCO can contribute to it? So most welcome, Salote, for you to give us an idea about ECCE. Like, uh, thank you, uh, uh, Professor Shabas, and a big mula to the participants and to our viewers. Um, and thank you, Savash, for the, for the question. Now, uh, early childhood care and education, why is it uh, significant? And uh, like what Professor Shabas said, in uh, the Pacific context, it takes a village to raise a child. And that, that is very true in the most of our Pacific Island countries. Because most of our Pacific Island countries, they have, uh, they have villages. Several villages will, um, will form a smaller island and many, many villages to form a Pacific Island country. Why is uh, early childhood care education is significant? Because it is the earliest uh, form of uh, learning and the earliest form of care that an adult can provide to a child. And in terms of the Pacific and especially the, uh, the Fiji Islands, most of the, the islands in Fiji, the 300 islands that uh, Professor Shabazz has mentioned that are in Fiji, are 
made up of villages. And these villages are tribally owned by different tribes and different uh, clans that still exist today. And uh, the villages, uh, the structure of the village is, uh, uh, what can we say, like it's, um, it promotes communal living. So when a child is born in a family within a village, the whole village is responsible for raising that child. So how, do, how are they responsible? They have to uh, constantly remind the parents of the child to make sure that the child receives the right cultural uh, uh, practices that is uh, practiced in our cultures uh, during that stage. For example, naming the child, uh, cutting the child's hair for the first time, and um, uh, breastfeeding and all those other things that associate with, uh, with childbirth. And then the, the villagers need to remind the, the parents also um, when the child, when is it the right time for the child to receive uh, their religious, uh, religious or, uh, yeah, the religious uh, practices. For example, if a child is a Catholic, the child needs to be baptized in the Catholic Church. And uh, the reminder constantly continues until the child reaches kindergarten. So when the villagers see that the child is hanging around the village, not being sent to, to kindergarten or to preschool or to childcare, the, the community or the villagers, they have a responsibility of reminding the parents. So it is like a particular child is raised by the whole village. And when the child comes out of the, the village, the child has this special attachment towards uh, his or her own village where he comes where he comes from and where his earliest education and care was provided to him from the initial stage and that is the significance of uh, early childhood care and education and with us as uh, early childhood uh, professionals we advocate on uh, the importance of the first 1000 days of the child and mm -hmm. when we refer to the first 1000 days here we are referring to the child's first 3 years when the child is uh, from childbirth right up to, to uh, uh, three years of age. This is when uh, education and uh, care is provided at home. So what type of home environment do we have? If we have a home environment that is deeply rooted culturally, traditionally in their faith, whether it is Christianity or Hinduism or uh, Islamic or the Chinese, uh, Chinese faith or other uh, religious faith that we have here in Fiji, because Fiji is a multiracial country, we see that the, the child will grow up to, to treasure and to nurture all these things that were, that were provided for, for him or her from home. And that is That's how great. I believe the significance of really the So it's really good to learn from you that uh, we have to bring culture, tradition, religion, in the first 1,000 days, and as uh, Salote, you mentioned, uh, the, many of these islands are so far away, even within Fiji itself. And uh, as I uh, remember, for you to come to Malaysia, you needed to take uh, maybe almost a day or more of a journey to uh, come to Langkawi. So uh, how do we actually make sure the standard of education uh, is maintained at a level which is the state of the art in the world. What is being taught in Europe, in uh, advancing and developing countries, as well as most developed countries and these islands, how do we make sure that the standard is uh, uh, at the right level, but at the same time, we must take uh, local context. So that's where this uh, idea of competencies framework, which we, has been part of uh, MUCP. Can you please describe us, uh, dear Salote, how such a framework has been useful and how uh, you get the benefit from all the other nations, but at the same time, you provide your context to them, so enriching two ways. So how does this work, the competencies framework for uh, uh, ECC education? Thank you, Professor. Um, as I've mentioned earlier, that uh, uh, most of the, 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 the islands in Fiji and the Pacific are made up of several or even one or two villages. And in the earlier days, 
education was uh, given to children through through their grandparents and through the adults that are part of the child's um, uh, daily life and daily daily living. And then uh, during the the uh, during colonization time period, when uh, Fiji when Fiji was um, um, uh, visited by 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 uh, foreigners from uh, Great Britain, from America, and all those other uh, foreign countries. They, they, they brought in uh, the, the, the education system that we have today. And that there were two things that they brought in, the education system and the, the religious system, the faith that we normal, most of us are, are practicing Christians. Most of us are Methodists and most of us are, are Catholics and uh, Seventh-day Adventists and uh, when the when the Girmits arrived from India, they brought with them their their religious uh, uh, practices. They brought Hinduism with them, and so that was the initial uh, form of education that we had. And then when we started, uh, uh, when the in the, the education system was um, um, embracing the the current uh, education that were brought in by the Europeans, we started to embrace. English as part of our um, our medium of instruction, and at the same time, the Fijians started to see the importance of education and how it can transform, how it can transform a person. And when a person is transformed, the person will actually go back to transform their village, their families, and in other terms, transforming their their home island. So. What was the, the, one of the first initial things that, uh, that happened was that the building of schools. Village communities started building schools in the, in the villages. So a few, a number of villages would, uh, would um, uh, jointly agree to have a school situated in one villages and all of them will send their children to that school. That was one of the, the uh, important things that happened in Fiji, not only in Fiji, but across the Pacific. Where a lot of schools were, were built and children were sent to school. So from home to school. And then later on, early childhood was introduced. Early childhood was introduced around 1982. And we, the early childhood professionals, we started to advocate the importance of, uh, of early childhood. And then it was brought in to, it became a program at the University of the South Pacific because we saw the need to, to educate uh, um, women so that they can go back into the community and uh, become uh, uh, early childhood or kindergarten teachers or preschool teachers. Some became nannies. And that is how the, the early childhood education and care program evolved at, uh, at the South Pacific. And uh, over the years, over the, the, the years, the Ministry of Education started to recognize the importance of early childhood. And in that recognition, it started to accept framework that came global framework or regional framework. And this framework was used to, to be customized to match whatever we have in the Pacific. So that when the children are learning in the Pacific and teachers are teaching them, the teachers that are teaching these children at kindergarten are competent, competent with whatever is required here at the Pacific and not in New Zealand or Australia or in other, uh, other international countries. So the, uh, we, the early childhood professionals, we had to work very hard to, to try and uh, revise and customize and contextualize the, the teacher framework that we had received from UNESCO that was brought to us by the uh, UNESCO Bangkok uh, office. We sit together through uh, several workshops and we looked at what was relevant in the Pacific and what was not relevant. Whatever was not relevant, we had to uh, rephrase and we had to uh, revise it so that it matches whatever we have on the ground. So you have actually brought what are the uh, universal standards and ideas all the way to customizing them from for your villages and place the right kind of importance on the ECCE, the first 1000 days of uh, uh, our mental growth. That's very, very important. That's where I want to also highlight for our viewers that Fiji has a very 
Um, an interesting background, of course, with the culture and the faith and uh, all the ideas which have been mentioned, but also more than 91% of literacy. And that can only be possible when we have very good teachers and we make sure the standard of teaching is very high. And that's where the competencies of teachers play a very, very important role. So let's now move on in terms of uh, uh, your learnings from the other countries and the South-South uh, cooperation and network. How do you first start such a network within Fiji itself? You have so many of uh, the islands and there are so many teachers who may be uh, not well connected. How do you bring uh, all of those teachers together and how do you make sure that all of them are learning together. So how do you start at the national level to uh, bring the standards for teaching and training the trainers, uh, training the teachers, and how this association continues together? If you can give us some ideas. Thank you, Professor. In Fiji alone, we, we normally, the University of the South Pacific normally collaborates with uh, the Ministry of Education. That is our first uh, point of contact. And uh, we also use other, other stakeholders like the Fiji Early Childhood Teachers Association. And we also, the Fiji Early Childhood Teachers Association has several uh, uh, branches across Fiji. And these branches are made up of early childhood uh, teachers. And a particular branch will have a branch president and they normally have meetings, uh, monthly meetings. And at the end of each, week, each year, we normally have hold a conference in a location in Fiji and all these teachers uh, uh, come around to attend the conference. And with the help of the Ministry of Education, uh, we are able to, to reach the teachers in whatever location they are in across uh, the islands in Fiji. For example, right now we are working with, uh, we, with Ministry of Education in providing um, uh, learning to 27 in-service teachers at a separate island away from the, the main island. And these teachers, they do not, uh, they are not located on only one island, but in separate smaller uh, islands that surround one of the islands that, uh, that is the main, uh, main center. Mm. So to be able to get through to these teachers, we work through the Ministry of Education. We have a contact person and our early childhood uh, advisor officer who normally uh, sends message to the uh, education division that is located in that particular island and that is able to gather the teachers uh, uh, together. And it is through our, through our program, the Certificate 3 in Early Childhood Education and Care and the Certificate 4 and the Diploma of Early Childhood and Care Level 5 that uh, we teach the students about the, the framework. Mm. Yeah, we insert the framework in the program because I cannot, uh, I cannot uh, uh, override whatever the Ministry of Education has in place, but I can use the, 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 the program that I have in order to, to disseminate the, the information regarding the, the framework and to set the standards for these teachers. Uh, this is very, very important that you have a Ministry of Education, which is helping link with the teachers. You have a university which is bringing the right kind of training materials which can be disseminated. And then of course you are linking with the UNESCO and we are very proud to link with you to bring these standards of education because this is part of SDG number four. And SDG is part of our 2030 30 sustainable development agenda. If we have to get rid of poverty, if we have to provide safe access to water, if we want to have better health, then we must achieve SDGs. So SDG 4 is fundamental to achieving everything. I see some questions are being raised by colleagues. Um, and uh, one of those questions is, you have such a successful experience, of course, um, dealing with uh, colleagues from many different islands. And you were already using many electronic uh, means before COVID uh, came. Can you tell us the connectivity? How do you link with the uh, media like Zoom or others to train the teachers? 
And what are the lessons in the process? What are the incentive for people? Why should they learn? What is their uh, motivation in your view? How can we bring such motivation to everyone in ECCE? Thank you, uh, Professor. As you may uh, have known that uh, the University of the South Pacific is uh, known as the premier university here at the South Pacific. And uh, there are 12 uh, member countries that mm. make up the, the body, the main body of ownership for the university. So we have uh, uh, it's, it, the, the staff that we have at the university is quite uh, multiracial. So we don't only have Fijians, but we also have uh, nationals from Tonga, from all those 12 member countries. You know? It also has staff from um, international countries like uh, New Zealand, Australia, and uh, America, and uh, the UK. Now, before being a premier university, it is, I, I can say it is ahead in the, the use of uh, online learning and the technology. So for myself, in order to, to serve the students out there across, in, uh, across the South Pacific that are part of the 12 member countries, I normally uh, uh, provide uh, uh, satellite lectures. Okay. So the satellite lectures, there is an allocated time in Fiji and the time uh, the students, we have technicians because we have uh, un uh, university campuses in the 12 member countries. They will alert the students to attend those satellite sessions according to their time. And we also have uh, all our online materials, the soft copy of our online uh, learning materials. We need to provide this through our Moodle, the Moodle shells. Wow, very so, good. So each semester we have to create uh, Moodle shells for each of the courses within the three programs. And the, the third thing that we have, uh, uh, Professor, we, one of the things that I, that I observed when I earlier joined, uh, when I joined the university earlier was that, was the absence of uh, uh, local people in each of the 12 member countries to teach the teachers in their own language because they will understand the teachers uh, more fully. So that was one of the things that I observed and I requested that I have local trainers in each of the 12 member countries. And so the local trainers, they, they are called consultant facilitators and they look after the students uh, in Nauru, in Samoa, in uh, Tonga, in um, uh, Solomon Islands, Vanuatu, in Tuvalu, Kiribati and in the, in the Marshall Islands. And uh, after COVID, yeah. I think we have gone more into virtual learning and we are moving away from face-to-face uh, -face because online is quite slow. The introduction of uh, online is quite slow across the Pacific. It was only uh, more active in Fiji, but not in other Pacific Island countries. But I think COVID was a blessing in disguise because it pushed us to uh, accept to accept virtual learning across the Pacific. And we can see that the students are blending more virtually rather than face-to-face uh, -face and we are getting, we are receiving a, a positive feedback from, uh, from students and from staff. And today before, our, before this meeting, I held a Zoom meeting with, uh, with my early childhood uh, facilitators and they were sitting from, uh, from Vanuatu and we were talking about the the, the 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 semester that has just ended and we were discussing also our readiness for the coming semester. That's wonderful. So of course uh, e-learning you were doing already, flexible learning systems uh, you have been bringing together and there is something in it for everyone. They are bringing their standards uh, to the next level. There is professional satisfaction but very importantly it is contributing to the nation building through child development and learning. And there are proper kind of observation, monitoring how the children are developing. Do we have the safe nurturing, inclusive and the safe environment for them? So this is a very, very commendable job what you have been doing and with the University of South Pacific, we also run another program which was about climate change education. For that, we will have another uh, time for that. Now let's uh, uh, go a step further. 
uh, dear Sulote, there is a very beautiful culture of your uh, islands and uh, I wonder, can you give us some idea, like you are having a very nice flower on your head, we are always impressed with your flowers. So tell us more about the culture of Fiji and what Fiji offers uh, uh, to the world. <laughs> Well, like I said, Professor, Fiji is a multiracial country. We are known for our friendliness. We are known for our hospitality. So everyone that knows about Fiji, they will always want to come to Fiji because of the hospitality of the people. And if, yeah. you, if you meet a Fiji, the first thing you'll get is a smile or a laugh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's really wonderful. We are impressed with your smile, with your flower and with your knowledge. You have uh, been doing a wonderful job for not only Fiji, but for the 12 countries uh, together. And uh, those nations are really benefiting from you and uh, the literacy rate is amazing for Fiji. Uh, may I ask you the last question? From a sustainability point of view, for these partnerships to be sustainable, partnerships between islands and your university, partnerships between UNESCO and the, uh, where you are working and for those people. How these partnerships can be sustainable for also the countries like Malaysia who are contributing these funds and trust. What is your take on how to make these partnerships sustainable? Um, <clears throat> Professor, um, one thing that I have observed is that uh, Children in the Pacific, those who are in countries that are closer to the Philippines, that is the Northern Pacific, because we are in the South Pacific, the Northern Pacific, that would include Malaysia. Uh, not Malaysia, Marshall Islands, sorry. I think yeah. I'm missing Malaysia. Oh, you must come back. Hopefully, <laughs> everything will be okay so, soon. Children that are in the Northern Pacific and are closer to the, to the Asian countries like uh, uh, the Philippines, they tend to know more about Asian countries and Asian cultures. But children who are in countries that are at the Southern part of the Pacific, they tend to know less about uh, Asian countries. So, yeah. Based on that observation and on that knowledge, to strengthen and to keep our partnership uh, sustainable, one of the important things that we need to do is to work through mutual education and share, share uh, experiences or share knowledges. One of the things that, uh, that came out in my meeting that I attended at Nebraska on uh, the meeting uh, to do with uh, World Forum Foundation we came up with the idea of Friends of the Earth. And mm. that, the Friends of the Earth, what does it do? We, we connected a kindergarten or a preschool from Fiji to a preschool in the United States. That same idea or say that same concept can be applied in the, the Southeast Asia and the South Pacific or maybe the whole Pacific where we have a, uh, a country partnering with a country in the South Pacific and sharing ideas on early childhood. That is just one, uh, one idea that I have that can strengthen the South-South the uh, cooperation. Thank you very much. That's what all the time we had today and we want to keep it to 30 minutes. So, but really many interesting ideas have come through. And I see in the question board, there are questions which have been asked by Grace, by Samina, by uh, Aptu and other colleagues. And they are very much aligned with what we have been discussing with Salote and uh, the insights hopefully are very, very useful. So let me give a very brief summary. The first one is, it's a serious business. If we want to educate a nation, we must start with the early childhood care and education. And it takes a village to raise a child, as Nelson Mandela says. And uh, also, Salote has uh, given us a very clear example that uh, this concept is very important for those islands where Salote has been working. But also, very importantly, there is a need for partnership. 
and the partnership from the university to the ministries of education all the way to those islands and those villages taking on board the religious context uh, all faiths but also importantly bringing on board the cultural context to make sure the child development is in the right way every child has a right to develop and learn and must be given a fair chance for a greater outcome for the whole planet for sdg4 but very importantly having inclusive and safe environment where these children are studying and developing and they become useful citizens they have better education primary secondary all the way to the tertiary education we are working in a multicultural multi ethnic environment so we must respect each other and to respect each other is to give proper context in the education and the partnerships which are delivering useful outcomes and uh, driven by a purpose only those partnerships can be successful we have seen in case of uh, today's topic and salote's insight already e learning was happening but with covid it's now accelerated and those 12 countries which salote is serving through uh, the university of south pacific there are many of those e learnings and uh, uh, salote is uh, giving zoom lectures to the teachers working with the teachers and the trainers so there is a lot to learn here for the nations in asia whether there are bigger countries like pakistan or there are small nations and uh, developing states like islands or nations like philippines with the dapad uh, philippines has so many islands as well as indonesia so we can learn together and together we can move forward and our insight is south south cooperation and partnerships driven by a purpose can deliver what we need to deliver I also want to draw your attention dear colleagues with uh, today's uh, survey if you want to get a certificate then you must fill in the survey and many materials will be shared on ECCE where Salote and other colleagues have contributed especially the framework for competencies which you will be able to download for free we thank uh, Salote and we thank the whole team for being with us and we will come back next monday with another very interesting sustainability insight thank you very much i give it the floor to sachi thank you salote thank you professor thank you very much um professor shavas miss salote and all the participants please do not uh, miss the upcoming sustainability insight part 4 it's on 13 july with professor susana neto president of the portuguese association of water resources the title of the session is a uh, building bridges for inclusive water futures uh, we wish you a good day stay safe and see you all soon at our next event thank you thank you <coughs>